Hi, Flosstube. This is Nithya, and um, you're at my Flosstube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. It's the end of April, so uh, we're talking cross stitch. And um, I have lots to show you, as usual. Thank you so much for those of you who had kind words about my kind of rough month last month, but things are so much better now. My dad's better. Um, we are, I don't know if you noticed, we're packing, so things are happening with our move. There's a, that's our messy pile of stuff we're going to be giving away. Um, that's building and building. We've already taken a car load over to donate. So things are happening. Things are in progress. It's been a much, um, much better month. So thank you so much for your kind words, both here and on Instagram. I really appreciate it. Those little doses of kindness. Um, I, should we get started? Cause I have so many things to show you. My, look at my notes, look at all this stuff to tell you about. So um, I usually start by showing you something old that I've taken off my wall and I just tell you a little bit about it. But today I actually, I have a finish. So we're going to start with that because I'm too excited to share it. So let me show you what it looks like. I'll show you a little bit closer too. So this is a pattern by Peruvian Flare on Etsy, and the pattern is called the um, Cat's Reflection Sampler, and uh, the designer is named Ana Aguayo, and she's from, she's in Florida, but um, she does a lot of Peruvian-inspired patterns, and her, um, this one is inspired by a pre-Columbian motif, cross-stitch motif, so pre-Columbian meaning before the arrival of Europeans, right? And um, she had found this motif on an old, like, pre-Columbian textile of a cat. And so she designed a sampler off of that. Isn't that so cute? I'm not even really uh, a fan of animals in general. I mean, I, I believe in animal rights, but we've never grown up with pets or anything, you know. But I just found these so cute. Like, my little It's going to be too blurry on my low-quality video. But, like, look at this little buddy over here. Just so cute. And the smile, kind of like the cheeky smile on that one. <laughs> it's just so cute. And um, so there's a hashtag that goes with this one and check it out. It's hashtag Peruvian cats sal, cats more than one on Instagram. And uh, I check it out because every single variation on this is beautiful. You will just see a page full of beautiful patterns. Everyone's are so lovely. And it was a fun way to experiment with color. Um, so I started by just Googling Peruvian textiles and there, so many of the pictures that came up were brightly colored fabrics. So I thought, okay, I definitely let, let's go bright on this one. And then I've been waiting and waiting to try to find a way to use this. It's a DMC color variations. I've been doing a lot with color DMC color variations. This one is called elves because it's got greens and reds in it. So it's actually, it's really cute for like a little Christmas sampler or something. Um, but I went with that one because it had so many bright tones in it. It's red, coral, and like a mint green. I'll hold that up a little closer so you can see it. See that? And then I dug around. So I kind of held the uh, skein of that elves into my um, collection of flosses. And I thought, what color would coordinate with this? And I have this limited edition teal by Color and Cotton, which I'm just, I've fallen in love with Color and Cotton. Will you see the variegation? A tiny bit on my screen. It's like a pale teal, so like a minty seafoam green. And then the variegated part is like a cloudy pale blue, kind of like an icy. No, it's not even an ice blue. It's like a uh, the blue version of a seafoam green, if that makes sense. And um, so you can see it. When I'm looking at it, I can see variegation, but probably you won't be able to see it. And I thought it went really well because of that mint green in the elf. So I coordinated that. I've been doing, I've been participating in the weekly Wednesday night um, stitch and chats, the live stitch and chats with Michelle and Michelle Bendy Stitchy. And uh, you just join it. If you subscribe to her YouTube channel, she puts a reminder up usually on Wednesday. It's usually on Wednesdays and people join in from all over the world. And what happens is it's just a, it's a video on the video. It's live. You see Michelle and then you see what she's stitching on. 
and and then there's a chat window and all kinds of top I mean tons of interesting topics come come up. You you couldn't imagine that a group of people who meet for just two hour one and a half, two hours who talk about cross stitch would have anything new to talk about each week, but all sorts of it like so many informative um, topics of the conversation have come up in that chat. So I recommend it no matter where you are in the world, give it a shot. Um, you won't be disappointed in that. And someone during one of those Wednesday night chats brought up the idea of like, because uh, Michelle was behind the hashtag, right? Peruvian cats, Sal. And someone said, Oh, wouldn't it be cute to do uh, the reflections in a different color than the main cats? So that's what I was kind of looking for a coordinated different color to do that in. And then for the border, I wanted something totally different. So I just picked these bright blues. These are DMC. Um, the darker shade is DMC 820, which I have a lot of because I'm using it on my pandemic sampler redo. And then um, did I write down this blue? It's a 3800. It's in the 3800 series, the lighter blue in there. And it came from... I don't have it here that I've shown it in my videos before, but I picked up uh, during a holiday sale. I picked up like a, a pack, a DMC anniversary pack, I think it was called. And it had 24 colors in it that were all in the like 3,800 range. That pack has come in so useful. So I'm using it like it had a number of skin tone colors in it. Like the 3860s were in there. I think there are some nice yellows, the 3820s are in there. And then like this bright, that bright blue was in there too. It's, it's come in very handy. When you first look at it, the colors are so brilliant and bright, um, to like jewelry tones that you're not quite sure what to do with it, but actually it's come in very handy. So, so that's what I did on this. I ironed it, but I haven't done very well because I was so, I, it was, I was worried to do something wrong with it. So anyway, very happy with this one. Oh, this is on 36 count mellow. This is one of my clearance um, picture this plus linens from one, two, three stitch. Mellow is a discontinued color, but look, it, it, isn't it so nice? I don't know if you're getting the variegation. It's like a yellow and white kind of marbled look. It's really pretty. It's been coming on clearance a lot on one, two, three stitch. It just depends on what fabric count you like. So the latest one I saw, it was a, they had 14 count, um, fabrics. I think like this, like this is a 12 by 17, basically this size. Um, so just, you know, be looking there. I, ha I stitch on a lot of their clearance fabrics. So it's nice that like for three or $4, you can get one of these. So super happy with this. And how great does it feel to have a finish? I feel so motivated to try to finish more items now. So, um, cats reflection sampler by Peruvian flair. I will link it, um, below with, along with everything, everything I talk about will be linked below in case you're interested in starting that too. I'm, um, I'm thinking of how to finish it. I don't know how, like, probably frame it. I think this will be nice to put up in our new place when we move. I just don't know what to do, um, like what kind of frame I should put. I was toying around with the idea. I, I um, pick up a lot of thrift store frames or like clearance frames. And then if I, even if I don't like the color, if I like the width or the shape of it, I'll just get them in and I'll paint them with cr acrylic paint. So I was thinking of maybe, um, choosing a frame that had another bright color, just another contrasting bright color. So maybe to go along with these like blues and teals to do, do like a darker teal um, that would contrast with this border. That's just an idea. I'm not sure, exactly sure yet what I want to do. If you have any suggestions, let me know on that one. It's been a long time. It, that, that finish is my first finish since I started Floss Tube in October. And it's my first finish finish since it's probably been four years because I'd been away from stitching for a while. So it feels great <laughs> to finish something. And I started this in April. This, it was a, that stitch along the cat Peruvian cats, Sal hashtag stitch along. It started April 3rd. So I started and finished it this month. So if I could finish this in a month, so there are some of you out there who are going to finish this in a weekend. I think it's a quick stitch. I mean, even for me, it's a quick, quick stitch. So I recommend it. I love it. There's another Anna's doing, getting ready to share a new pattern. I can't wait. I'm going to get started hopefully this summer on that one. Okay. Should I, um, can we talk about some old items? So, uh, because we've been packing, I have been packing a lot of craft items and 
first of all, I have so many. There are too many. There are so many. I have so much. I found so much yarn, an unbelievable amount of yarn and like patterns, pattern books, all kinds of items. So uh, let me show you some. I have this. Um, let's start with a stitchy item because that's what I usually show for old items. So this is called rose moling and rose moling is Scandinavian. I want to say it's, I think it's Norwegian. The videos I found, I'm, I'm, I'll um, link a video of uh, a little talk, a little cultural talk about this. So rose moling is a Norwegian or Scandinavian decorative art. And it's usually painting. It's these floral motifs, like these scrolly kind of shapes and floral patterns that are painted on wooden furniture or plates, um, dishes. So uh, this pattern, it's on maybe a 28 or 20 count, maybe. I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's on a beige Ada. I don't know what um, what count it is, and I, I can I know I probably chose beige because it has white in the design. Look at how I cheated over here. Where is it? Look at that. So those are all cross stitches. Those little dots. Uh, they're supposed to be French knots, and I don't like doing French knots. I can't get them right, so I just stitch <laughs> just stitched them. How lazy! So down here too. I think those are supposed to be French knots, and I stitched them. So um, I think I chose the beige so that that white would pop out and I really like it. I have no idea why I didn't frame or finish this. Look, it's not even iron. Do you know where I found this? It was hanging off the edge of a bookshelf in our spare room. And I didn't even realize I had hung. I just like hung it there and I had like a, a book sitting on top of it. And then it was hanging off the edge. It was a little dusty, but otherwise in good condition. And it um, came from... Uh, this book, Beautiful Cross Stitch by Better Homes and Gardens, uh, it's on Amazon, but I try not to shop on Amazon. So maybe try to find it used if you can. I mean, it is available there. It's the cover cover design on here. And talk about embarrassing uh, packing realizations with my crafts. This book had about like a half inch of dust sitting on it. It was on the bottom shelf of our, my like my, I have a craft books on the bottom shelf there. And I think I have a suspicion. See, I was stitching on this in our last apartment about 10 years ago. And I think I probably finished it around the time we moved. And I think that's why I never really got around to framing it. And I think when we moved in here 10 years ago, I think I put this on that shelf and then forgot about it because, oh my gosh, there's so many great patterns in this. So it's organized by chapter, thematic chapter. So I don't know if you're seeing this. Earth's gardens, cute as a button. Around the world is where I got the rose mulling. Um, birds and insects, the great outdoors. So it's got all these themes, right? And if you go to, I should have bookmarked it, but I'll I'll flip do a real quick thing. I want to show you the art of Mexico. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, like that sun and moon. Wouldn't they make great smalls for like a journal or something? Or like to put inside a car. I don't know. Like that's just beautiful. Let me find uh, rose molding. Okay, so rose molding looks like that. That's how you write it, and I'll write it down in my note in the video notes. So, and I'll put a little cultural video down there too, so you can see it. But it's like an old. It's a folk art. It's a it's a um, Scandinavian folk art. And there's a little bit in the photograph. See, there's like a little some kind of decorative jar or item, something there, but it's got those little scroll patterns in it. Um, they finished it in a tote bag here, but I just did the piece. I don't want to, I should not be showing the patterns. Let me not, I don't want to flip through this too much. Um, but I'll show you one other thing. I liked that art of Mexico. And then, um, there's an Eastern European art piece. I wanted to show you because there's, there are items for Stitch Asia in here. Oh, they're not in the culture life. Anyway, I can't, I don't see it, but look at this. There's one with a mermaid. There's like an under the sea theme. I know people are stitching mermaids. I was watching, um, uh, Kansas city girl in a Colorado world. Is it Julie? I think her name is, I don't, maybe there isn't a stitch Asia in here. I'm not seeing it now, but, uh, anyway, lots of beautiful stuff in here and I cannot believe I haven't even opened it up all these years.
So, oh, here we go. Asian symbols. Oh, that's a, hold on. That's the chart. Asian symbols. So, um, it's a nice little collection of patterns. And, um, yeah, I would do, I would do some smalls from here for sure. I don't know if I would start a whole project, but, um, I would choose something from there. One other thing I found, okay, these are not by themselves stitchy, but they reminded me of a stitchy thing. So I have, I have so I have like bins with craft items and they're not organized. So like I found, um, knit and crochet items. I found like random stuff like these. So these were cut out paper cutouts. Let me face it the right way. From so this you the designer the paper stationery designer on this is very recognizable if you're familiar if you buy stationery it's Rifle Paper Company they're out of Florida and um, my sister and I love to kind of raid their um, online clearance items and one of my favorite things to pick up from them are old calendars like like um, when they have their holiday sales if they still have a calendar from the previous years or even that year because the year's almost over. We'll pick them up because on the inside they've got all this beautiful artwork and this was from a calendar the theme was coffee and tea so each uh page had something coffee or tea related and they do a lot of international patterns too so this one says moroccan mint tea so it's like the design the calendar would have been down here right so this is the picture that goes with the calendar and then this one is um coffee of indonesia and I know I cut out, I must have cut both of these out because both Indonesia and Morocco are on our travel bucket list, at least mine. Um, Morocco, we didn't have plans to go, but 2021 was going to be the year that my husband, Steve, and I went to Indonesia. We planned it. We didn't plan it. We, we had the idea two years ago. I actually, Steve and I do stocking, Christmas stockings for each other. That's what we like, fill stockings for each other for Christmas. And in his stocking from, 2019, I thought, ooh, let, let me suggest a travel destination. I know he Indonesia is on his list and it's on my list. So I got him a bunch of um, cute items like postcards, um, little Christmas ornaments, um, pins and things related to Indonesia. And I put them in his stocking and then um, I made him a little one of those. Um, is it Shutterfly? One of those photo companies where you can get photo books printed. I made him a little photo book and it had a picture from every single one of our trips. We travel a lot. We, and we have traveled a lot from every single one of our trips. And then on the last page, it said 2021 Indonesia question mark. And then it had like a, a picture of a Indonesian textile on there. So this year would have been the year to do that. But after last year, pandemic and everything, we didn't even bother planning. We made no plans. We basically have just cut ourselves off from travel. If this summer we do maybe some day trips, like local day trips around here, that will be a successful thing. And we want to see um, my in-laws, his family in Oklahoma City. We haven't seen them in ages. So, um, but that would have been our trip. So I, I was thinking when I pulled these out, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to put these in a cross-stitch journal? Because I've been stitching kind of small things to put in a journal. And I would love to maybe um, stitch something related to these and then um, journal like maybe a list of places I'd eventually want to see, like places in Morocco, sites in Morocco I'd want to visit or sites in Indonesia that we'd want to visit. And I'd, for Indonesia, I'd put Steve's list there too, I'd ask him. So I need something to stitch. So I, I have already, I have plenty already. Indonesia is easy because I have uh, ink circles. I have both squirrels of Sumatra and forests of Sumatra and squirrels of Sumatra. That pattern has some really nice borders in it. So I think I'm thinking of just stitching one border, like a, like a bookmark almost. And then um, I can do it in a coordinating color here. Like I have so many core, I have that coral shade. It's like DMC 351. I don't know why I have so much of it, but maybe I could do something like that. And then well, blue accents. And then this one is a pattern by Zephyr Mood on Etsy, and it's a Moroccan, Morocco mosaic, I think is what it's, Morocco mosaic. And um, it, I just, I held this next to my DMCs, and I just tried to pick colors that look sort of similar. It's not perfect, but it's got kind of blues and greens that, um, let me hold it up closer so you can see. 
That mint green is that same limited edition teal from Color and Cotton that I'm so in love with. I just like throw it in everything. So that I've done part of the, it's, this is it. This, like this corner here, that's the corner. So it, this motif gets repeated all around. So it's easy. Um, the other thing I'd really like to try that would be fun for a Morocco page is to get some Moroccan mint tea and maybe try to dye some fabric and then stitch another tile. So this, this, um, Morocco mosaic, it's actually several tiles in the pattern. So this is just one tile. So maybe dyeing some fabric with Moroccan tea, it would smell good. And then um, it would also, I don't know what color, because I think this mint tea is kind of a yellowy color. So it's, it would just be interesting to see how it turns out. And then stitch a tile on that too. So um, we, I love that I'm cutting out and saving stuff like this all the time. One, I thought maybe this would be cute, like in the kitchen, just framed because it's so pretty. And then on some of the things like this, even this, see, you can see the cutout, the, the pattern overlapped the circle where you hang the calendar, but I didn't care. I just cut it out because the pattern is so pretty. Anyway, colors on it. So, nice. so I say like, I saved so much. You would not believe the amount of stuff I found, just random stuff, crafty stuff I found. And I need to start using some of it. So anyway, this is kind of exciting. This was an unexpected, exciting um, thing that happened this month. So, um, and then I'm going to show you a quick flash of something, um, but not say much about it because we're 20 minutes in and I haven't even showed you like whips or new starters or anything. I am going to do this summer when I have more time because we're wrapping up the school year. I'm going to do like a quick thing. Oh no, it's coming undone. I'm going to do a quick thing on um, crochet and knit because I crochet and knit, but not very much, not enough to mention it every month. So I'm just going to do one video and like pull out some, I found a whole bunch of stuff I've been knitting and crocheting. Like, isn't that pretty? I pulled this out of one of those bins. I'm like, when did I even do this? I do not remember doing this. I remember this yarn because I knit like a scarf that I'm about to show you with this yarn. So I'm not going to say much about it because I don't even know what pattern I use. I don't know anything about like, this is just a random square I found. So this summer when I have time to look into it, I will look into it and share all the resources for it. I want to make more, like, why didn't I continue? I, I bet you this was like a large blanket maybe. And I just got tired of doing it or something. So I ended it. I, or maybe it's, I don't, I have no idea. I, I don't even know what I was going for in that. And then with the same yarns, this is easily about four years old because I remember being in Oklahoma City over the holidays making this. I started a scarf. This is knit. You can tell because it has these V's, right? With knitting, you can tell it has these V patterns. And then um, uh, I can also tell because all I know how to do is knit and purl. So I just make it like this is a pattern I made up. I can tell it's got some knits. It's got some pearls. That's it. And then rib like. It's very basic. All I can do is basic knitting and um, crochet. So I will talk about all that this summer when I have a little more time to get stuff together for that. But I just want to show you a quick kind of preview of that coming up. Look at this. I got a random, like, I found this DMC card. I found all sorts while packing. And, and I, I want to get that, or when we move, I hope to get it organized too. So we'll see. Should we talk about some whips? Let me make sure I... Oh, no. Do you know what? Um, I want to tell, talk about finishing, but why? Oh, because of this. Because of my rose mauling piece. I have so many floss tubers to recommend. Um, have you all seen Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch on floss tube? I'm going to link all these people below. She did a video recently where she had a beautiful finish. She basically took two pieces of foam board. One was larger than the other, square. And she covered one in fabric and then neatly glued it down. And then she, on the smaller one, she glued her project, her little, she has done this. I want to do it so badly. It's a prairie schooler pattern, which I don't normally do, but there's one with birds on it, prairie birds. And there's one that's a cardinal and the cardinal is our state bird in Illinois. <clears throat> I just loved it. So she matted one piece and then put her piece on it. And then what she used, she set it inside 
a small frame, but it wasn't a picture frame. It was like one of these, you've, we've all seen them in a decorative, like a, a home decor store. It's a frame. And then on the inside, there's like a board with an inspirational quote or saying, if you're just supposed to leave it out on a desk or you frame it, you're, you hang it up. So she, all she did was use the frame and then she set her matted foam board inside it to cover the quote. She used up that space for the foam board with the fabric. And then she set her project in there. So the, the frame was there and then her project was inside. It's, it's simple, but also it looks hard, but also it's very beautiful. And she did a little demo in her video. It's, um, she had kind of a, um, speed video showing how she did it. So I'm just thinking, like thinking about finishes. That's a question I have for anyone who's watching. Do you have a favorite way that you finish items? Because I'd like to get a little bit more experimental with that and maybe not just throw everything in a frame, which I do. I know some of you are full coverage um, fanatics, so you probably frame your big projects. But for smaller items, I'd be curious to know. I really also love um, Jenny from Jenny Stitching Simply. You've got to see her because she she has such an elegant style of stitching and she has original kind of unique finishes too. Um, she's a really big fan of modern folk embroidery. So if you like that style of stitching, you will love everything she does. Her videos are also very cute because her son Roman helps her behind the scenes and it's just, they have a very cute family dynamic. It's, it's very sweet. You feel nice watching those. Um, and then for other finishes, oh, um, I had mentioned Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. She did something really cool, too. She uh, had recently designed some little house motifs, and she framed those in, like, um, what can I show you? Like, imagine a fabric-covered board, and then she put her piece on it, but she also had it, like, on a stand, like, it was a cardboard stand. So that you could set your project down, like on a bookshelf. So her project was here, and then she covered both sides with fabric. I I, I asked her in her flush or her um, video comments if she could do a little demo on that because I thought that was really cool. Not everything has to be hung up, you know. You can set it on surfaces too. So I was watching a sunshine stitchers video. To be honest, I'm not sure if it was a recent one or an old one because I watch a lot of their videos. I've been watching old ones too. Um, Gary had finished a dr a really beautiful drum. That seems very hard to do. He had someone else finish it, I think, for him. But it had like an orange fabric. He does a lot of Halloween-y patterns. So, he so I don't know. There are just so many interesting ways to finish. So um, I would like to hear from you. You know, I'm thinking about how to, how to finish this, fully finish it. What are your favorites? Do you have favorite ways to finish that aren't, um, you know, outside of framing, basically? Okay. Um, let's talk about some whips already, 30 minutes in. So, uh, I have two, <laughs> I have two whips on like five new starts in, uh, classic Mythia Daybreak Stitchery style. So, uh, let's, let's just start them. So one of them is a restart of Dreaming Girl. This is by Barbara Anna Designs. And it was, uh, like the March... February, March stitch along she had. It was like a five part stitch along. You can pick up the pattern. Oh, you can pick up the pattern now, I think, on Creative Poppy. I mean, if I can find it, I'll link it below. Um, but it's a girl. This is the one I had started on a purpley, like a pale purple Lugana. And I just wasn't feeling it because the, it was the paleness of the purple kind of felt, um, similar to the tones in the skin I was using. And also I made a mistake on the skin tone. So, I have talked about this before because this is a fantastic project to play with skin tones. If you want to stitch in different skin tones, try this project. And here's why. Because you need four colors. And it's um, shades of color. You need a very dark color, a kind of less dark color, the actual tone that you want to stitch in, and then a very light color all kind of in the same similar range, but not right next to each other, like in a color palette. So the mistake on my last one, my last version was that I was choosing DMC colors that were right next to each other on the color palette. But when you stitched them, so if you see her face, this side of her face, the lighter side of her face, that's the actual, like if you have in your mind, the actual skin tone color that you want, you want that side of the face to be that color. 
The next side is in shadow. It's the light is not on that side of her face. So it's darker. You want to go like two shades darker. If you go right next to it, then it they look too similar. You're not going to see the contrast. See how you see the contrast? You won't get that contrast. So you want to go like two shades dark. Whatever you choose as your main skin color, go two shades darker. Then go a couple shades darker than that because on the shadow side, right in here, like by her eye and her nose to show the depth there, that it's dimensional, you go two shades darker and there's a little bit like right, do you see right in by her eye and next to her nose? It's a little bit darker. That's the darkest tone. So, um, and I, I've, I, so I pulled out all my beiges and browns and then I just laid them all together and I thought, okay, which ones look too similar? Like they look too similar laying next to each other. So I skipped a few colors. That darkest one, it, it's a, it's a random silk from a mystery bag from Silks for You. So I don't know what color it is. Probably if I poked around the website, I could figure it out. Um, but that boy, that came in handy because I needed one. That would be, it's almost like a pinky brown, but it's very dark. And then there's a, a much, much lighter shade, which is basically like, look at my, you can see the, like when you look at me and my forehead's shiny, it looks white, right? So you need to show that too. There's light uh, on her forehead. So you need a very light tone for that. So my recommendation would be one, stitch this because it's an excellent study in shadow and skin tones. And then my second recommendation would be to pick your main skin color that you're aiming for and then choose the, the, the light and the two darker ones after that. That would be the way I would do it. Um, it's beautiful. A lot of people are doing interesting uh, variations of this. So um, I'm just following the besides changing the skin tone I'm following the rest of the motifs it's a four seasons pattern so um you see fall in these fall the, her hair stretches out to here and it has fall leaves hanging there you see spring flowers uh here like all around then it goes to summer here and then the, this bottom part underneath her hair is winter there's it's like these same buildings but they have snow on them so it comes, it, all four seasons are there. You can do adaptations. You can add your own motifs. If there's something meaningful to you that's related to the seasons, you can add your own. I, I just don't, I didn't feel creative about it. Um, so I left that. The other thing I changed is I wear a lot of cardigans <laughs> and like sweater, comfy sweaters, like open sweaters. So I made hers an open sweater. I think in the original pattern, it's more of like a baseball t-shirt. It has like um, a lot, a couple lines around here that I left out. So. I also put in, I've, the, the advice that I'm giving you about color, like where on the color palette you choose your colors for skin tone, you probably should think about that for hair too. And I didn't do that and I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to leave it. There are actually two hair colors here, but you can't see it, right? Because they're too close together on the, on the color palette line. I can see it here when there's light coming in on it. It's a dark brown on top and a black on the bottom. So like this wisp of hair is dark brown, the bottom wisp is black, but you can't tell the difference. I should have probably used contrasting colors, but I didn't think about it. And now I'm just gonna go with it. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me that much. I The other thing I kind of added is, you can see my white hair is coming in. So I, I gave her two wisps of white hair. <laughs> that kind of matches me too. But other than that, I'm not getting super creative with this. Um, this was all this month I did. So it's, it's, uh, it's a quick, you know, it works up quickly. This is 18 count Ada. It's called Harold and I love it. It's a green, I, Hey, uh, the word of the month is teal because everything I show you is going to have some kind of teal on it. This is kind of a teal and it has blue splotches on it. It's so pretty. It's 18 count easy. 18 count is easy stitching. Uh, I like, I'm liking that. And this piece it's like one of those eight by 12 cuts. So it's like the least expensive cut, right? A fabric besides getting like a, a grab bag, you know, mystery thing. Um, and it fits, it fits on there. So it's, you know, you can, it's nice to have a pattern that just fits on a small fabric. It's easier to hold. I stitch in hand. So it's just easier to hold. So I love it. It's coming along great. Uh, I would like to try to finish this in April, maybe, because there's not a whole lot more to go. And if I could do all this in a month, I'm basically halfway. So I think I could do that. Um, there's a hashtag for this. 
is it Dreamy Girl Sal? It might be Dreaming Girl Sal. And you can check out everybody's variations. There's, um, you know, Michelle from Bendy Stitchy. She did a MMIW missing and murdered indigenous women. So all of her motifs are related to Pacific Northwest people. She lives in the Pacific Northwest. So um, indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest. There's someone who's doing a Disney tribute to, um, is it Merida, the main character in Brave? And she's um, Irish, I think. So she's got like red hair. But the important, oh, the other thing, um, the called for fabric is some kind of turquoise. I would recommend sticking with like a green blue fabric because I, when I chose that pale purple, it didn't quite go. Then you started stitching things. It didn't quite go. So I think when the designer picks a fabric tone and picks all the threads with that in mind, there is something to that. You know, it's a good recommendation. So I was happy to go I, that I went with a more blue green member family for that one. My other whip is um, Hannah Mandela by Ink Circles. I haven't made much progress on it. The um, the goal for both of these. So whip go, work in progress, bingo. I've been very loosely following it because I've changed it. So what I want to do, I, I filled out the board in January. I put in all my um, works in progress that I wanted to revisit throughout the year. Um, but more and more, I've been wanting to try to get smaller pieces towards a finish. So what I did instead is I've on my whip go board, I've kept the stitch goal. So like if it's, you know, stitch on something for five days or complete a certain number of stitches or um, complete a certain number of motifs on something. So I've kept the stitch goal, um, but I'm changing out the project each month, depending on what I want to work on. So one of the goals for this month was originally it was to complete three motifs on my Owl Forest Swan Lake sampler. So... Instead, I completed mo way more than three motifs, a whole bunch of motifs on this because I knew I can work this towards a finish and that one needs a lot more work. So I completed, I'm considering it a complete goal because I stitched a number of motifs on something. On this one, I'm going to meet this goal too. The goal, the stitch goal was to either have a half or a quarter complete on my pomegranate Quaker by Owl Forest, but instead I want to work this because I'm so close. Um, I, there's like a little bit more, the bottom edge will be like to here. And so to get a quarter finish, I just need to fill in this. So, and I have this week left in April, so I can do that. Technically for whip go goals, I think the word on the street is you, you have like the whole year to complete the goal, but I've been trying to do it each month. Don't know why, just have been. So, uh, I love it. This is PR zero six eight. I think it's like a black and red blend. It's a really pretty pattern. I'm loving this. I would love to finish this one too. This, I, If this was my next finish, I'd be so happy. And I think it's doable. So I'm going to try that. Um, so that's whip goal. Those are the only two whips I worked on. <laughs> Everything else is new starts because I am out of control. So hang on. I just want to see if I had any other notes to share about anything. Oh, the skin tones I used were in the DMC for Dreaming Girl. Um, they were like the DMC 3860s range. That's what I had started with and then, um, went lighter and darker from that. And then, um, in, uh, the Hannah Mandela I'm doing for, uh, hashtag stitch Asia. Uh, that's an ongoing effort to just, uh, increase representation in our stitching and also in the designers, um, who we shop from to make sure that Asia is represented too. The fabric on Henna Mandela was clearance, uh, dill by picture this plus 18 count. This is another discontinued color that I'm now I've fallen in love with it. It's like a mustard yellow. It's pretty really great neutral tone. Look out for that. If anyone's selling it on clearance because it's like they're running out of it, you know, look out for that. Okay. Let's get to some new things. So Quaker Seasons of Friendship by Crown and Thistle. When I started watching Floss Tube in the fall, I fell in love with this pattern. Can I show you? You've all seen this, I think, because it's been around. People, lots of people are stitching on this. I probably first saw it on Cross Stitch MD, Shiloh. I know, I know she's doing this one. 
Um, Jan Hicks is doing this one in a beautiful Mississauga. I think she's using like copper. Um, EJ is doing this from Sunshine Stitchers. This is one of her, um, this is on her Whipco board, I think. It's so, so many Quaker motifs, so many beautiful motifs. So during one of those Wednesday Stitch and Chats, the topic of unicorn projects came up. And I asked, oh, can you go over that again? What's a unicorn? Pro-? People were talking about what their unicorn project was. And Michelle was saying that it's a project that is an out of print pattern or very hard to find that would make you so happy if you were to come across it. Like if you were to find it used or something, because it's so it's out of print and it's so hard to find. And I thought to myself, oh, you mean my white whale? That's what I call it to Steve. I'm like, oh, that pattern is my white whale. I don't know why I use a Moby Dick reference for that, but that's what it is. Um, and I, so then in the chat, I said, oh, that's easy. My uh, unicorn project would be Quaker Seasons of Friendship because I've looked and looked and looked and I can't find that one. And I know it's out of print. And I bought a copy in December on eBay from uh, someone who seemed very nice in Alabama and the U.S. Postal Service lost it. It was supposed to arrive on December 28th. It never arrived. We we both put in kind of requests to research for it. And the post office eventually, like in February, they said it's probably been destroyed, like in our processing plant or whatever. And I wasn't upset with the post office because here in the United States, the U.S. Postal Service is under a lot of um, stress and pressure, and they're not support. It's an essential service, and it's not supported enough. So, I I wasn't upset with the post office, but do you know what I felt? I felt sad because at that time I thought that these patterns were out of print. So it's like what a loss to the cross stitch community that like one of these rare patterns has now been destroyed, and we I can't like I can't stitch in, then I can't pass it on. Like it doesn't exist anymore. That's what I was thinking. So during one of these stitch and chats, I I said, okay, so I said, oh, that's easy. That's my that's my unicorn project. And someone, I, I think it might have been um Diane from It Is Kismet Stitches. I, I don't I honestly don't remember who it was, but someone piped it. Oh, so all these people in the chat were naming their unicorn projects. And so I think it was Diane that said, Oh, try dying to stitch. They're a shop in Virginia. And they're, they're behind Crown and Thistle. So I said, okay, like that second, like in that 30 seconds after she said that, I said, okay, I'll be right back. And I looked up Dying to Stitch. I Googled them and I found a contact email. And right then and there, I said, hey, you know, someone mentioned that you might have this uh, Quaker Seasons of Friendship. Uh, do you know anything about where I can find it? Within five minutes, Anne from Dying to Stitch emailed back, oh, yes, that's our pattern. We sell it exclusively in our store. I have plenty of copies. Just call me in the morning with your, you know, credit card, whatever, your mailing information. Within a week, I had this arriving at my door. And I love it. I love it so much. Here's what I have so far on it. You see, I'm not, I, let me see. I'm going to fold this smaller so I can see if you're seeing it. I'm stitching this baby one over one on 36 count. Look out, everybody. One over one on 36 count. And the motifs are so pretty. Beautiful, delicate. It almost looks kind of lacy, right? I love that. Uh, one over one. This is uh, probably my new favorite color. DMC 154. Is it 154? Yes, DMC 154. It's like the the um the name is very dark grape or something like that. It's basically a wine. It's like a purpley wine color. I love it. I just love it. And this is raw natural linen. The threads are really loose. So it's actually, if you want to try stitching one over one on a smaller fabric, this might be a good one to try because I usually I I would never attempt it. like 32 count one over one even weave is probably the smallest I would do. This has been surprisingly easy to do. And I don't even need so far I haven't needed a special light. I just need to like my um light that I have by the couch. I just need to bring it in a little bit closer and it's been okay. I love it. I love this. This um so this stretch here takes us to 
this part here. When I was, so I'm, I'm just in this top corner here. I really enjoy it. If I can do like a motif a month on this, I'd be pretty happy, I think. It's been, this is a joy to stitch. Just a joy to stitch. I love it. And I, I think it's going to be, I was overwhelmed by the size of it because do I have the stitch count? The stitch count is enormous. It's like 400 and something wide. It's really big. But if I do it on a smaller count, it'll be a little bit more manageable size, I think, too. So we'll see how it turns out. But that's Quaker Seasons of Friendship. It's by Crown and Thistle. And I'm going to, um, I'll link their store down below. Because if you're interested, you can contact them directly. Anne was so nice. I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Sorry about that, everybody. So I just couldn't believe that it was just so easy after the whole ordeal with the post office, you know, that it was so easy to find. But this is what I'm talking about during those stitching chats. Just like you get so much information because it's a, it, there are like a hundred, a couple, a hundred people, maybe a couple hundred people who join in on those chats. So you just get a lot of information. I have, it's going to come up a lot because I've been doing those and I've um, made, you know, connected and gotten information from those. So, okay. So that was Quaker Seasons of Friendship. I just got a little start on that. Um, next one is, the next two actually are items that I picked up from Expo because those started arriving at the beginning of April. And the first one is called Quaker Turtle. Let me show you the whole pattern. Do I have it? Quaker Turtle. Isn't it cute? I enjoy turtles. I don't know if you, um, wherever everyone is in the world or in the U.S., I, I don't know if you have a lot of turtles where you live. We do have quite a lot of like pond turtles here. And I just enjoy watching them. Like every um, nice nature area that we have here will have little turtles sunning themselves. And um, I, I enjoy that. Ch frogs and turtles, I enjoy just watching in nature. And so I've just done like the head right here, this little part, the snout in the head, that's where I'm at. That's all I've done so far. My picture is so blurry, you won't be able to see it very well. And uh, DMC color variations for the win, once again, let me pull it out and show it to you exactly. It's DMC 4025. Um, it's called Caribbean Bay. Look at all those pretty teal, teals again. Why am I drawn to this color and I've never realized it? Anybody? I mean, what, do you have a color like that that you're drawn to all the time? Uh, 4025, DMC 4025. And so I'm going to stitch. I thought they'd be per perfect for like a sea-themed item. And this is on 37 count, 37 count Wild Honey by Access Commodities. Uh, it's a nice, it's like a sandy color. So that's kind of what I was going for. It's pretty. I, I enjoy this one. And uh, like I said, it's an expo pattern. It's by RETM. And um, I picked up this one. So I picked up several expo patterns uh, back like in February, March. And this one came from Inspired Needle, which is in Lamont, Illinois here which I think is my local needle workshop. In Chicago, we don't have a an LNS. We don't have one. Everyone shops either online or like we have these big box, fab uh, you know, fabric and craft stores. Um, but on the website for Needlework Expo, they had a list of all their local needle workshops that buy items during expo and I happen to find inspire needle that way and now that I know who they are I hear about them all the time like floss tubers mention inspired needle a lot and I didn't realize they were here so this pattern I picked up from them I also picked up patterns from um stitching stitches and things in Michigan they haven't shipped yet and then I also picked up a few things from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. So I kind of did a little bit. Everybody seemed to have different items in stock. So I had to, I, could, I couldn't find everything in one, which is okay. It's nice to support smaller businesses, right? So um, it's kind of exciting to find my local needer workshop. I haven't been there in person because I just had these shipped uh, to me. But they're about, about 45 minutes away. Maybe from my new place, they'll be like, 30 minutes away. Um, 
in the southwest suburbs of uh, Il- of Chicago, the Chicago area. And um, it's Kathy and Nancy, and they they seemed really nice. I I emailed them some questions about things. Um, they were very nice. So I I picked up this one. I picked up a couple fabrics too, I think. Um, and then the other. No, I have one more thing I wanted to say about this. What did I want? To, oh, um, floss tubers. Have you seen Neat and Not by the Sea? Neat, like a person who's neat and tidy, and not, like tying a knot, by the sea. They're floss tubers. It's Victoria and Catherine, and they're from New Zealand. And uh, I love hearing them talk. That accent is so interesting. And Catherine is creating her own, like a tribute to New Zealand sampler, and it's going to have Quaker animals on it. So I mentioned this one to her too, but she's got a beautiful, I think it might be like a Kiwi bird or something, a Quaker Kiwi bird. She's, she's already started it. So I'll link their um, YouTube floss tube channel below. They're fun to watch. They have a lot of projects. Also, Catherine is of Peruvian descent, like Anna. And, um, which is cool because they make their, Catherine and Victoria make their floss tube, their videos, but then Catherine will do separate videos in Spanish. So if you are like me and you're trying to learn, it's just kind of, why not watch a stitching video in Spanish? Cause you probably recognize a few things in there too. This is my Quaker seasons of friendship that I started on this wild honey. And then I didn't like the colors. And then I found that 154. So I use that instead. Okay. So Quaker two do- turtle RATM. Um, DMC 4025. Okay. Um, I'm also, this is gonna, I know floss tubers aren't going to agree with this, but this is just for me. And I'm, I'm, I love what you're doing too. I am eight days in to a 100 day challenge for myself where I tried not to buy new haul because I have so much. And it, it came from two, two points, basically. First is after finishing my Peruvian cat sal, I, it felt so good. And I, I just, I want to be on a finish kick for a little bit. So I just need to focus. I want to try to focus like henna mandala. That's totally finishable. I think I could do it if I just focus and stop spending all my time looking at patterns I want. (laughs) And, um, and the other thing is packing for moving. Like, I just, I was overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that I have. So I'm going to try, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to try to see if I can go a hundred days without anything new and just stitch on what I have. I have, I probably have 40 whips that I've started since October and I have items kitted up that projects kitted up that I haven't even shown you yet. So I don't need to be picking up new stuff. So, um, I, my reward, <laughs> I'm already thinking about my reward for doing this. My a hundred days, I used an online calcul- calculator to count it. A hundred days from when I started this would take me to July 27th, <laughs> which is the next time I could buy new items. So um, I just thought that a nice reward would be to visit Inspired Needle and pick up some items there. So that's, that's what I'm getting at by talking about this. So Um, we'll see day eight of a hundred days. I also started, I mean, I bought Hades this month. Why? Why? Why did I do that? Isn't it pretty though? This is Autumn Pears by John Powell. (laughs) Why am I buying a full coverage piece when I have like so many items I haven't even started yet? I also bought a mini. (laughs) They had a sale. They had a 50% sale this month. Mini Night Maiden. This is a mini one. Um, this is a full size. What the stitch count on this is 450 by 684. Like, what am I doing? Um, hey, for those of you who are full coverage fanatics, can you maybe send me some tips on like what are your best? What's your best advice for someone who's starting a full coverage piece? Because I don't. I I really do love that. It's a still life with like this be- these beautiful va- um, vases, bowls, ceramic bowls, and you can't see it on my video, but there's a really pretty yellow curtain with blue designs on it here. Um, even this mini, like I like these leaf and tree patterns behind her. I'd like. I genuinely like to start these, but I don't have the fabric or materials for this yet, and. 
until July 27th. <laughs> I probably won't. So maybe you could just recommend some things in the meantime, some some um, tips. What are your tips for starting a full coverage piece? I would like to know. Okay. Another new start <laughs> this month has also been another uh, expo, Needlework Expo Hall. So Needlework Expo, I think everyone knows already, is it's like in March, it's the vendor uh, marketplace where cross stitch designers market their patterns to local meter workshops. But they, um, so you as an indiv like a, an everyday shopper wouldn't buy items there, but you would connect with your local needle workshop because they are buying these patterns in batch and then they're re ready to sell to you. So during the whole process, they're making the designs visibly available to any of us. So like the whole time you're seeing what patterns are going to become available, but it's through eventually through your local shop that you get them. So it's nice because it supports local businesses, right? It keeps our um, needle workshops going. So this one I got from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. And this is actually an extra pattern that comes on Oh Feathers by Rosewood Manor. And uh, that's pretty, isn't it? It's a peacock pattern. And these are all uh, sulky threads. There's a sulky pack that you can get with this. They're, mm, Rosewood Manor is not good about convert. Yeah, there are no DMC conversions in this. You'd have to create it yourself. Um, it's charted for sulky because there's a pack that goes with. And so I'm doing this on the other end of the same wild honey fabric. My turtle's on the other end and then this one. Um, so it's going to be a welcome it's going to be this welcome sign, which is cute because we're going to our new place, right? So I thought it'd be cute to hang in the kitchen. It's got some pretty, it's all the same peacock tones that are in that peacock pattern. And it's just a welcome sign. That's pretty uh, good coverage on this. This is that 37 count, right? So it's getting decent coverage. I'm still on the fence with Sulky. I don't know why I keep stitching with it, but it's not, it just doesn't get the coverage. I'm, I'm not experiencing the same coverage that I would get with two strands of DMC. Um, but it's fine. It's enough. The color palette is really, I don't have the thread pack here to show you, but the colors are pretty enough where I'm stitching on that. So it's the O feathers pattern. And then it's the welcome, uh, pattern on the back of that. I'm trying not to show it too close because you can see. It's not the actual pattern, but you can see, you can tell what the pattern is. I don't want to give it away. Um, that was from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. Okay. Um, I picked up a new long dog sampler because why not? Because I'm always picking things up. It's opening gambit. I picked up this one and the other new one that came out this month, Live and Let Live, because there are actually rare, smaller patterns by Long Dog Sampler, not like these vast, huge pieces. The stitch count on this is 176 by 269. So the length is a bit long, but the width is not too bad. And it's a chess inspired. It's called Opening Gambit. Um, it's chess inspired. And I have chess players in my family. My nephews play chess and uh, my dad plays chess. So it just, it creates a nice association for me because I picture like my dad and um, playing with his grandsons and it's, it's a nice, um, it's a nice family thought. And do I have it here? Yeah, I do. And the other nice thing about it is because I'm going to do it in uh, monotone, just black. It's a, uh, the fabric is, you're getting a little bit of the model feel to it there. It's sterling. It's an 18 count sterling by Picture This Plus. It is like a pale gray, basically, a pale, 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 bluish gray. And uh, I started, and I love it. It's easy to do. It's um, this part is this part right here, this top corner. So see that, that flower and like the little bum of whatever that animal is there? That's coming along next. So on this one, I started this edge and I was doing um, two, this is 18 count. I was doing two threads and I didn't like the coverage. Like even now I'm looking at it, it <laughs> any other person would be like, it's fine. You can't see the thread, but I can see it. And what was happening, I, I cannot see, like normally when you stitch, your thread gets twisted, right? So you untwist it as you're stitching um, before you put the stitch in. 
well, on this black DMC 310, I can't see it. I can't tell whether it's twisted or not. I'm having trouble seeing it. So for the stitches where it was twisted and I put it in, you can see the fabric through it. So I'm stitching it with three, three threads. I know people are going to say it's too much. It's too thick. And it does look very thick. But the coverage is so solid. And I love that. I love. And you're still able to see like on this flower, you're still able to see the bits in between the open parts. You can see it. That was going to be the real test. As long as I could still see something through it, I, I'm going to keep doing it. Now I zip through it basically. Like, like this is just one night of stitching. That's a lot for me. Like, and we're talking like an hour because once I start, like after this bit, I changed to three threads and then I didn't need to keep on twisting it anymore. I just didn't, I just stitch, just stitch, stitch. I didn't have to pay attention to the twisting anymore. So you just, you zip right through. So I'm going to stick to doing that. I think I'll keep it. I'll, I'll see if there's anything like, um, maybe when I get to like this pennant here, as I move across, I'll see how that looks because there's a little gap there. And I don't know if those, if those little openings there don't show up, maybe I'll, I'll rethink it. I might adjust it also and do two threads in one place, three, some places, three in the other. Um, but I'm pretty happy with silver and it's, it's an easy stitch. I recommend it. That's been a nice one to do. Um, what else? There's more everybody. Thanks for hanging through, you know, sticking around through all this. Um, I just on a whim, probably after watching Jenny, Jenny stitching simply, she does so many modern folk embroidery patterns. And I finally picked up this one for Stitch Asia. It's the Katakana sampler. It's one of the three. So in Japanese, there are three writing systems. There's the most basic one is called hiragana. And then this katakana is used for um, any words that are from another language, that are used from another language, but written in Japanese. They use a different alphabet for those. So that's what katakana is. And then they also use Chinese characters. So um, katakana sample. So this is, um, oh gosh, like I was, I started studying Japanese in December of 2019 and I'm like a pitiful student. Like don't tell my students because I'm a terrible student. I tell them that they need, it's like practice and repetition, right? Like you need to have exposure every single day and you need to be listening to it and reading it because you need input. Your brain needs input before it can do output. And, um, I go many days without studying, but, um, so like these are vowels here. So, ah, uh, e, mm, that's o. And then you add consonant sounds here. So this is a, ka, sa, mm, ma, ya. I don't remember all of them. Um, it's pretty and it's very simple. And I am loving this. Hey, guess what color is back? <laughs> this one. Limited edition color and cotton teal is back on this one. So it's... Um, It's teal, and then it's DMC 4000, color variations. It's a variegated gray and brown, and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. If you need like a brownish tone to stitch with, color variations, man, there's, there are some really beautiful colors in there. So that's what I'm using for this. I don't know. You're not going to get a very good picture of this, I think. This is on another clearance, 32 count. It's an even weave dill from Picture This Plus. And usually on 32 count, I stitch one over one, but I'm doing it over two here and it's still dainty and very pretty. I like it. This, um, this blue part here is the halfway point. So we're already at a half here. So there's another half here. It's not that big. And then how far is this? There's still a ways to go down here. I think it'll go to like down here. I'm enjoying it. You could do this for Stitch Asia. Um, and the other, the hiragana alphabet is there too. I chose katakana because this is the, uh, the, the other alphabet, hiragana is the one I studied first. It's the most basic. I can read that one. I can't read this one. I have trouble with it. So I thought, oh, this would actually help me with like my Japanese studies too. So, and speaking of katakana, um, I picked up, yes, I picked up another item which is why I'm eight days now into not picking up items. 
Um, this is a Japanese magazine, and I picked it up on Etsy, and it's called Stitch Ide. Do you see how the title there? Stitch Ide. And the title of it in Japanese is written up here in katakana. So this is Stitch Ide. Those are the letters there. Um, and it's stitch, like stitch, and then ide is a French word for ideas. So it's stitch ideas. And I picked this up because um, Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery has been doing some pieces for this magazine. And you can get it. It's um, you can get used you can get used ones or new ones on Etsy. There are lots of vendors selling like individual editions of this. This is volume thirty two. You just have to shop around a little bit because some of them charge a lot. It comes from Japan, so some of them charge a lot for shipping. The actual magazine is about twenty bucks, but it's full of cross stitch patterns. And I bought it for like, isn't this pretty? It's by. Tezukuri Town, which I guess is a Japanese designer, and it's called Art de Vivre, The Art of Living. I mean, just a little, like, there's patterns like that. But the one I really love, I haven't even shown you the Jacob one yet. It's an Anne of Green Gables sampler. Isn't it so cute? Have you all seen Anne with an E on Netflix? It's like the newest adaptation of Anne of Green Gables, and it's so good. It deals with so many issues. Like they deal with mental health issues there. They deal with gender. They deal with race. They deal with indigenous rights. They it's it's um so touching. It's a really touching adaptation. Everything it's cast so well. It's just so good. So I want to start this this summer and I want to rewatch that show. Um so that's in there. I mean that like that was worth the price of this. I they start in the the covers on the back. So let me see if I can find the one with by Jacob real quick. Oh, so Jacob submitted that pattern. Thistle birds. So it's. I mean, if you think about this, was twenty bucks for this, but you're getting a whole book of patterns. There's a lot of embroidery too, but I don't do embroidery. There's some cute like look at First Stitch Asia. There's some little Asian like Japanese festival motifs. So just shop around a little bit first so that you're not paying a lot for shipping. You have to look around a little bit for that. But it's totally going to help with, oh, uh, with my katakana. And in the comments below, I'm going to type the katakana for a hashtag, which is um, this word right here. It's the Japanese spelling for the English words cross stitch. And there's a hashtag with this on Instagram. So hashtag and then the katakana letters for cross stitch. And the reason why I'm gonna recommend that you copy that um, and search for it on Instagram is because then you get access to every Japanese cross stitcher that is tagging their stitching with the katakana cross stitch. It will open your world to all kinds of stitchers and stitching. So like, for example, I came across it, you know, by chance. So I'm already following that hashtag for some reason. I don't know how I started on that. Um, but look at this cute thing that showed up yesterday. I took a screenshot to show you. So this is someone who tagged hashtag cross stitch and katakana and like their finish is so cute. So they've, they've cross stitched this girl with flowers and then they framed it. But then they have these cutouts, these little floral cutouts, like it's a lily of the valley. So then they have a lily of the valley. It's maybe like a sticker or a cutout. And they decorated their frame with it, too. Isn't that cute? But, you know, so you just it's more exposure to stitchers and um, language shouldn't be a barrier. Right. So just copy it. Uh, for some reason on my phone, when I look at YouTube, if I see information in like someone's video description, I'm not able to copy that off my phone. Like when I hi try to highlight it and copy it, I'm not able to do it. But on my computer, if I'm on, if I'm on YouTube, if I'm on Flosstube and I'm trying to copy a word from someone's description, I can copy it there. So I don't know why that is the way it is, but try it on a computer. Copy, I will hashtag cross stitch in Katakana and um, follow it on Instagram, you will be like, it's, it's, it's the rabbit hole. You're falling down the rabbit hole. There's so many things to look at there. MFE Katakana and Stitchy Day. 
well, we're still going, guys. You still here? <laughs> I have, um, what do I have? Quaker Reef. Okay. Love this one, too. This is Quaker Reef. It's by Stone Street Stitchworks. And I've been waiting. They're on Etsy. I will link below. You get some good sales. Um, it's Salma at Stone Street Stitchworks. She puts some good sales on sometimes. I've been waiting and waiting to stitch on this pattern. I got it some time ago. Um, oh, you're going to know Stone Street Stitchworks. You've seen it before because um, like Shiloh at Cross Stitch MD, she's done a schoolhouse sampler, a Quaker sampler. That's Stone Street. Um, so I'm sure you'll recognize that pattern. And there are other, like she has a lot of 4th of July themed patterns too with Quaker motifs on them. But um, this one I've been waiting on because it's based, it's called Quaker Wreath. And it's got a floral motif and then three layers of wreath patterns around it that are these kind of, um, it's these parallelograms that are arranged in kind of Quakery patterns. The um, called for threads are DMCs. It's like grays and browns. But I've always thought this would be a nice one to just play with color. And my first shift shipment of threads from the thread club by color and cotton who i'm in in love with because of that limited edition teal that i'm always stitching with um they sent their first it's angela from color and cotton she sent the first pack for the thread club members um for this month and it's um well it's my first pack it's not everybody else's but it was all these springy colors and just like with my limited edition teal when the thread arrived i thought oh it's nice and then I put it aside because I don't really stitch with like pastel springy colors like that. But then when I finished Peruvian cat style and I was thinking to myself, Ooh, what other small projects could I be working on? This one I had written down in my journal as something to keep in mind as a small project. And I just thought, well, let me try to see, like, let me use those threads from the monthly thread club and see if I can work them all into this instead of just putting them in my stash. Let me try to use them. And they come because Angela has sort of, I don't know if I'd say they're coordinated, but they're kind of on a same palette, you know, because they are, they all are, they remind me of like Easter or spring flowers, that, that, those sorts of tones, those pastel tones. So they do kind of fit together. And it, it's turned out great. And just like with, with that limited edition teal, when you look at it, it doesn't seem like much, but when you stitch with it, there is absolutely variegation in it and it's really really pretty like if you look at this coral pink and you look around see how some of it looks almost white it's very pale and some of it gets darker it looks like a beautiful you know how when um when the sun is going past cloud when clouds are going past the sun and uh on the ground you see like these kind of shadows that are moving that's what it looks like when you stitch with these the only issue is that I'm stitching, this is on a discount, another clearance, uh, linen. It's a pink clay by Access Commodities. This was a great find because it's basically a pale, 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 pale pink. And you can stitch a lot of things on it. It's 30 count. Because the count is so high, I'm using three threads because you know me with coverage. I want everything to be perfectly covered. So I was worried, the only concern was that because you only get one skein of each color, would I have enough? So I had enough for the middle. I had enough for this central wreath. So I decided for the other wreaths, I better alternate colors just in case I'm going to run out. So that's what's happening. And I love it. I love it. I love how it's coming out. I think I can maybe finish this in April if I try. Because I, I'm based, I wanted to get to the outer edge, which I've done. So this is this this outer this wreath right here with the purples in it. That's the final wreath. There's nothing beyond that. So if I just finish this inner wreath and then this one, I think I could do it. I think I could do it. This is a fantastic pat. Remember how I recommend Dreaming Girl for playing with skin tones? If you just want to play with random colors, um, or um. Maybe like stitch different if you're stitching gifts for people and you want to do different colors for different people. This is a great pattern to play with. I could picture this in um, Christmas colors, like different reds and greens. I could picture this like um, 
this uh, February for my sister's birthday, I gave her her the birthstone for her birthday is amethyst. So I gave her purple. Um, everything in her gift box that I gave her was purple. So that would be kind of cool. Like um, mine is emerald. So it'd be cool to do like all different greens, for example. So if you know somebody's birth date is a certain stone, maybe coordinating it with all different tones of the same. There's a lot. I feel like you could you could do a Halloween -y theme and make like the floral part black and then do different oranges or fall. I there's it's you can really play with color on this and have fun with it and it's an easy pattern to do. So I recommend this one. I will definitely link this along with everything else below in case you want to try that. That's a, that was a surprise start and I'm so happy with it. We're almost there everybody. <laughs> Stick with me if you're still here. I hope it's still interesting. I'm having fun talking about it at least. Um, okay, I've got two more to show you, okay? And then plans, a quick thing on plans. Last video, I talked about how I was kicking myself because that Black Needle Society had a pattern. Like I wasn't crazy about the idea of getting all the stuff in the box that they do. They do a subscription box, but they had an ink circles pattern that I really wanted to start. So at the Wednesday night stitch and chats at one of those, um, Michelle at Bendy Stitchy is a rep for that Black Needle Society. And she mentioned that after all the subscriptions go out to people who subscribe and people, um, you know, there are all sorts of, if you're curious about what's in those boxes, people do unboxing videos where they open it, they show you what's in there. After people do their videos and after the creators of Black Needle Society, they're after they're pretty sure that everyone's received their boxes they themselves do an unboxing video where they give you insight as to why they picked out different items. So Michelle mentioned that when they do their unboxing, when Black Needle does their unboxing, that's about the time that they put all of their excess inventory on sale on their website. So that came up at a stitch and chat. Like the next day I saw that Black Needle Society had done their unboxing, that video unboxing. So I just on a whim went to their website and sure enough, they had that pattern that I'd been looking for, half the fun. And I love it because it's a travel, it's a travel themed pattern. There are bicycles in it. Um, I love stitching bicycles for my husband. He runs a bike tourism company here in Chicago, um, Chicago Bike Adventures. So uh, I love stitching bike and, and we, we love to travel, right? So I love stitching travel themed. So I got it and I started it. Here's what it looks like. And from far away, I don't know how much you can tell. Can you see that there are hot air balloons in it? Sailboats. Uh, this is the front of a train. See, it's the front of a train engine. There's a horse. I got to the bicycle. And then there's a funicular here. It's a funicular going up here. I'll hold it upright so you can see it. It's a, So these are the same patterns. It just goes all the way around in a circle. It's a funicular going up a hill. And I'll show you a little bit closer too. So I'm using yet another DMC color variations on this. It is 4240. Very pretty. It's purple, blue, and navy blue. Really pretty colors. And this is, uh, what is this? It's 40 count Feld Spar. I picture this plus. It's got, it's pretty. It's got blue and like a pinky beige tone to it. So it looked like clouds to me, and I thought that'd be great because for those hot air balloons and the airplanes and, and things, it'd be a nice contrast. So to give you an idea of size, it's tiny. This is the center, this like compass looking star, North Star maybe. This is the far edge. Like it won't go past that. I've reached the edge on this. So basically that same edge will come out here, uh, probably like here. So that's as big as it gets. It's not very big. I think because I, because it's small and I've stitched it with it for once, I've stitched it with enough border on it around. Maybe I could do a cool finishing on this too. So if anyone has ideas for cute thing, cute ways to finish it, let me know. Um, I'm already talking about finishing it and I haven't finished it, but uh, so that's called half the fun. It's by ink circles. Look out for it. I think I, uh, I heard that maybe it's sold out on Black Needle Society, so you'll just have to look around and see if you can find it anywhere else. Um, they stitched it on like a black and gray variegated. I don't know if you're seeing it. It's pretty. We've got one left, guys. 
And uh, it's also kind of an unexpected start. So it looks like the, let me pull out the pattern and show you. It's um, this one by the Sweetheart Tree. It's a tea, it's called Teeny Tweeny. It's just a teeny little one. I wouldn't normally pick this out for myself. And what happened was, um, it's still, it's still cute. Let me show it to you. It's teeny tiny and um, here we go. Like that, see this square, this box? That's what's happening here. Um, this box. So it's, it's gonna be very small. And it's got, it's a two part series. So I'm doing this one. But you see how the alphabet starts with O? And there's a separate piece with those little bunnies. That's actually pretty cute. The beginning of the alphabet starts there. So it's like two companion pieces. And the reason why, well, a couple things with this. So this came from Inspired Needle because I picked up, along with my um, expo items, I picked up, they do mystery grab bags of patterns. So, and it's a fantastic deal. And they changed the themes of the mystery bag. So I'll link below what they have now. Now the themes that I saw yesterday when I looked, they have a houses grab bag, a snowman patterns grab bag, Santa's nature holiday, and then sweet treats. And what they do is it's 25 bucks uh, US dollars. They pick out about $50 worth of patterns that fit that theme. You don't know what they're going to be. They just walk around the shop and pick them out, and then they send those to you. So I picked a Quaker theme. So then they, all the patterns they sent me were Quakers, and I think I got about eight patterns. Of really nice ones and all different sizes. I got ones that were enormous, medium, and then I got this teeny one too. It, it's really nice. They've curated it really nicely. And it's a great gift, 25 bucks for like about eight, I think seven or eight patterns. So I picked this one because I am trying out my very first Overa Spa. It's a silk thread on a spool. And I got this because um, I want to start Where Flowers Bloom by Hands Across the Sea. And I'm going to adapt this one. I think we all heard, like, Denise, your statement on um, samplers. Like, I get it 100%. I've always felt kind of a disconnectedness with reproduction samplers. I don't identify with it, really. I know that the motifs are so beautiful. So I'm going to modernize this one. Um, I like the message, where flowers bloom, so does hope. But instead of this house, I'm going to stitch the names of women who give us hope. So I'm going to stitch um, Malala Yousafzai, um, Greta Thunberg, Michelle, Michelle Obama. Stacey Abrams is going to make that. I love her so much. Um, I'll put Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. I think I'll probably put Deb Holland on there. So I'm instead of this house, I'm, I'm going to match the theme of hope and stitch the women, the names of women. We clearly don't have enough samplers with the names of um, Black, Indigenous, uh, people of color women. So that's what I'm going to do. And I like the idea that, you know, a hundred years from now, when someone looks at our stitching, when someone looks at my stitching, I want it to represent what's going on in my life now and not what happened a hundred years ago. That's not connected to me. Do you know what I mean? I get it. I, if, I, I get people who stitch rep reproduction samplers. I think they are really beautiful, but it's just not for me. You know, I need to do something different. So that's what I'm going to do. So I bought the um, called for Overaswa silk, which I've never used. It looks like this. It comes on a spool. It's really, really thin. To me, this looks like something that my mom would put in her sewing machine. It's so thin. So I just wanted to play around with it and do something small to get to help me get a feel for like what thread counts will this go with. Um, the called for, I think they are stitching with it on like 50, either 28 count or 56 count. And she said she only uses one thread. That does not have enough coverage for me. So I doubled it up. I'm using two threads on this and that's almost too thick now, I feel like. So I'm going to, the next one I'm going to try is maybe on a 32 count one over one and see how that looks because 32 count will be smaller than this 28 count. This is from a mystery grab bag from Xju design. So I don't know what color it is. It's just a small 28 count piece. So I'm going to play, I'm playing around with that. I want to do, um, 
I want to use the called for threads on it. I need to find a small font to stitch the names though, because if I make the names that big, they won't all fit here. I'm also looking for suggestions for names. I'm, um, who should I include on there? I have a good list going, but I want to see who else I can include on that. So that's my plan for that one. So, um, I will leave you with just my plan, <laughs> my plans. <laughs> My plans for May, hey, May is 31 days. We're going to get a lot of stitching in, everybody, in May. And school ends on May 28th. So May will be very busy for work. Um, but I'm going to squeeze in a whole lot of stitching, like full day stitching those last few days so that I can count uh, a lot of stitching in in May. Everyone's making plans for Stitch Mania, but I kind of stitch every month like it's Stitch Mania. I'm always starting things. I would like to finish something else. That's my plan for May. I want to I want to have another finish. So it could be Dreaming Girl. It could be that Quaker wreath, maybe. Um, I would like to try to stitch on some of my smaller pieces and get them closer to finishes. That's what I'm going to do. The new numbers for Whipgo, as far as I know, haven't been called yet. So I will I'll work that into the plan, too. I had originally been thinking, like, as I watched people's Floss 2 videos, I was thinking, hmm, everybody's got interesting plans. Should I do, um, maybe I could do all long dog samplers in May and have that be my focus. Or maybe all ink circles and have that be my focus because I have a lot of those patterns, right? But I think I'm just going to keep working towards a finish. That's my plan. I also thought, ooh, it'd be cool to do 31 days of smalls for a cross-stitch journal. Wouldn't that be kind of neat? But I think I'm going to wait till the summer and kind of squeeze in my smalls here and there. So um, one other plan I'm toying with is that um, I think everyone's seen already because it's been like since January, Julie McConnell is a floss tuber. And I think she runs a, sh it looks like she runs a shop too. Uh, and she started that 25 seven um, cross stitch initiative, which is where um, you take a project that you want to inch towards a finish and you either stitch 25 stitches on it every single day or um, you stitch on it for 25 minutes a day and then go on to whatever else you want to stitch. So I was thinking of doing that maybe with my modern folk embroidery stitch along because I've fallen away. I'm, I'm behind. The last time I stitched on it was in March and I didn't finish March. So I'm toying around with that. I emailed Julie to ask if it's too late to join in on it. I think what happened is people have been doing this since January. Like there are people who've been inching away at their, at their whatever selected project and doing this 25 seven since January. So I don't know, um, on her video, she suggested contacting her about it. So I, I, I'm just curious about connecting with another stitcher and I will see what she says about it. So that's another, um, kind of stitch goal I might add to me. It, I'd be curious to see 25 stitches. That's not very much. So I could do, tw I feel like I could do 25 stitches in something that would probably take how long, like maybe 20 minutes, less than that maybe, and then go on to whatever other smaller projects I have going on. So, hey everybody, it's been a, it's been a month, hasn't it, <laughs> for stitching. Uh, wish me luck with 100 days, uh, no new Paul, because I have an embarrassing amount of starts and things already. So I keep hope to keep that going. And um I wish you all luck too with whatever stitching you have going on. I'm enjoying you, uh Floss Tube community. I'm I've been watching so many floss tubers this month. I love it. I hope you all are enjoying some sun and some stitching and um we're gonna connect again at the end of May and on Instagram and everywhere else. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a good day everybody.